Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. My name is Yusuf and today I will present to you how you can set up an external aerodynamic simulation using the so-called standard measure. The agenda for today looks as follows. I will again show you what you are going to learn, what steps are involved in the simulation. If you have already seen this, don't worry, you can simply skip over that. And at the end of course we will have a demo where I can show you how you can set up a simulation for the so-called Ahmed body. So what are you going to learn? I will first show you how you can prepare the geometry properly in order to make it usable for incompressible fluid flow analysis. I will also show you how you can assign boundary conditions for this type of simulation and we will of course mesh our geometry and at the end have a quick look at our post-processing results. Again the terminology, so here we have a hexahedral element which consists of 8 vertices, 6 faces, 12 edges. The underlying equation that is solved for these kind of problems is the so-called Navier-Stokes equation. Here you can see it in its simplest form. And it's nothing else than Newton's second law of motion. Steps involved in the simulation look as follows. So we have in step zero our physical problem or real world problem which we'll transform into a mathematical model which we call PDEs which stands for partial differential equations. The next step would be to mesh the CAD geometry that means we pre-process our CAD and also make sure to defeature it that means we get rid of unnecessary details in our CAD. Next, we define the analysis type, so that means if you want to have it single phase, multi phase, incompressible, compressible. Next, we can specify the fluid properties as well as boundary conditions. Step 4 would be to select numerical schemes, that means adapting solvers and interpolation schemes, for example. And at the end, of course, we post process our results and have a look at relevant quantities that we are interested in. To break this down even more, you can here see a simplistic approach where we have a pre-processing step followed by a processing step and last but not least we have the post-processing step which means that we visualize the generated data. If you have any questions regarding the slides or the project in general, feel free to reach out to us via the forum and I will put a link to a dedicated forum section down in the description. With that being said, let's jump straight into the demo and let's get started. We are here now in the workbench. So you can see the Ahmed body right here. It's a very famous case of a fluid flow simulation, or at least the geometry is very well known and very well discovered. And you can find plenty of papers online about this kind of Ahmed body. What we need now is to make it really suitable for our simulation purposes is to have a fluid flow region. That means fluid flow is entering our domain and will go out of the domain and will actually flow around our object right here. And our goal is to do an external aerodynamic simulation. For that purpose, I take the Ahmed body, click the context menu, add geometry operation, select flow volume extraction and hit enclosure. It doesn't look too good as for now because the Ahmed body is just flying around and the Ahmed body is not flying like in the real world. So what we are going to do now is to simply type in the correct coordinates. And there you go, 1.167 is fine as well. And this is very good because the mesh that will be created is not too big or not too small. And it turned out that the dimensions are quite useful in this case. So we have two times the length of the Ahmed body in front. We have eight times the length as a whole length. The width is one times the length and the height is two times the length. So it turned out that this mesh will not be too big or too small. So we also save computational time as well as core hours. We can start the enclosure operation by clicking on start. We don't have to select any phase in this case. It will take around one minute or so until it finishes the enclosure and that will generate an enclosure or region for us which we can actually choose for our external aerodynamic simulation. There we go, our domain has been generated, it looks very beautiful. What we do next is to create our simulation. So for that we click on Ahmed body, create simulation and we know that we want to have an incompressible fluid flow analysis. So I click on create simulation. What I do now is I create my material and I know that air is flowing through my domain. So I select air, click apply. And in case I want to adapt the parameters, I can always change the viscosity model and change the parameters like density or the viscosity. I save this setting. I don't adapt the initial conditions. What I can do is to estimate them, like for example, velocity. And if I do that correctly, the solution will generally converge faster, but we leave it as it is as for now. As for the boundary conditions, we select a velocity inlet, which we assign to this phase. And this will be in UX direction, positive UX direction of 63.7 meters per second. The pressure outlet will be right here at the end. Zero pascals is fine. This surface can be assigned to a symmetry boundary condition. 
So if I, I can either click the face first and then select the boundary condition, or I can select the boundary condition and then select the face. It's really up to you what you want to do. We also select the wall boundary condition, but with a slip condition, which will be this face as well as this face right here. What we still need to do is to have a moving wall. So we select wall, moving wall, and this is the same velocity as the air entering our domain, 63.7, and I select the bottom face. That's great, and we can save it. And I don't select the car, but don't worry, if we don't select the car, the default boundary condition will be a no-slip condition. So I leave it as it is and can move on. What I do now is I skip the numerics and I go straight to simulation time. An end time of 1000 seconds or 1000 iterations in this case, because we will have a look at steady state, as you can see right here. Turns out to be very good. Delta T is one, and as I mentioned, it's a steady state analysis, so the time variables define iteration number. That means we say we have 1000 iterations and that's actually quite good for external aerodynamic simulation. What we do next is to have a write interval. So we write it out once and only the final state is important for us. You can't select the number of processes if you don't have a professional plan. I could select 64 or 32 cores in my case or even up to 96 actually. Some maximum runtime can be left or I just type in 10,000 and it will transform it to 1 to the power of 4 seconds. Potential foam initialization can also be activated if you want, and it actually stabilizes the, the run. What I do next is to create result control items. For that I go to forces and moments, want to write out the coefficients, and type in my parameters. So center of rotation will be 1, direct direction is 1, this is 0, and if you want to learn more about that, you can have a look at the documentation or in our forum, where power users already have written some good posts about these kind of parameters. The free steam velocity is 63.7 meters per second. The reference length is actually 1.044 meters. The reference area value is 0 0.112. And time step written out is to write interval is 20. And what I can do is select the 11 faces. For that, I deactivate selection box here. Hide these regions, hide this as well, activate it, select this um, box selection right here, go over it, and I have now 11 faces selected as you can see. I can save that, and for the forces and moments, I can also do it for like every 20 steps and select all 11 faces right there. When it comes to meshing, this is very easy. I select the standard meshing algorithm with an automatic sizing, fineness of 5, so I don't want to go to like 10 or something, but keep it at maybe at 5, around 5, and then see what the results look like. I want to have automatic boundary layers, physics based meshing is activated, hex element core as well, and the numbers of processes is for you, automatic, but I can choose for example up to 96 cores. Before we generate the mesh, we want to add some refinements in the wake region. What we can do for that is to create something called a Cartesian box. We add a refinement like that, and we say region refinement. And we can create a geometry primitive, which is a Cartesian box. We say that we want to have this Cartesian box activated for our wake region. I just click save as for now. And now I adapt the parameters for this box for our wake region. Perfect. So we can actually turn off the flow region and we can actually see how big the, the Cartesian box is. I turn it back on, click save, and for the region refinement, I have it now selected, and one I want to actually have a minimum edge length of 0.02 meters. Perfect. What I also want to do is to create local element refinement. So what I do is I go to local element size, type in six to the power of minus three meters, and we'll select again all the 11 faces, which I have done before and as well. So I hide these selections, activate this, select the faces with a box, and there you go. I click OK. And then I could theoretically start the meshing. Once you've started the meshing, you can hit simulation run. So you can add a simulation run. But what you can also do is to immediately start the run and it will first generate the mesh 
and immediately start the simulation. But if you're not so familiar with that and, uh, and you're not sure what the results will be, first start the meshing. Maybe use the mesh clip filter to cut through your mesh and see if you're happy with the mesh or mesh quality and then start the simulation run. When it comes to post-processing, I've already prepared something from my last run. So here you can see the force coefficient plots. And what you can see is that the values are fluctuating and after around 400 iterations, we have a constant value. What we can actually say is that after 400 iterations, our solutions or forces and so on seem to be converged. That's a good sign. Regarding post-processing, I can go to my run, click on post-process results. What you can also do is to click the context menu and click on download results and it actually shows you the size as well. Perfect. I've already prepared a cutting plane in this case. And what you can see is that we have a low velocity in the, in the wake region of the Ahmed body right here. And what you can also do is to variate the slices or the cutting plane at ISO surfaces, at particle traces and so on. So what I can do is I can simply move around the slider and you can see some regions. Maybe you want to cut the Ahmed body. So I have to slide it even more like that. Yeah, it's a little bit cut, but here you go. You can basically adapt it according to your needs. So feel free to play around with that. You can also use other options as, as I've told you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via the forum or write a comment under the video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. <music>